everyone and welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. Today's tutorial is a quick, fun project that you're going to want to make a ton of for everybody. Today's tutorial is for the Merida Drawstring Backpack. This is such a fun little drawstring bag to put together. Like I said, it comes together quick. This is fantastic for kids. Especially, you know, when you have kids and you're going somewhere, they're gonna go stay the night at grandma's or you're gonna go on a little overnight trip and they wanna pack their own bag and they're not gonna put any essentials in it, right? We all know that they're gonna to put toys and stuffed animals in it. This is perfect for that. It can really take a beating. It has a nice vinyl or cork bottom, something sturdy on the base. It has this beautiful little pocket in the front. It's a little zip pocket that attaches very easily. Boop, poke it in like that. The pattern does go over how to make straps for this, for the drawstring. However, I have a kit of different colors of paracord and that turned out perfect for this. I just, I wanted to do this as fast as possible. I actually busted out this bag right before I'm filming this video. Like I just did it this morning and now I'm gonna show it to you. It comes together very quickly. So if you see, I stretch it out. It's just a nice rectangle, no fancy bottoms, no fancy anything inside. We have just a basic lining. The lining does have a zipper in it as well. I'll tell you that both of these zipper pockets, the exterior and the lining zipper pockets, totally optional. If you just leave those off the bag, you won't be missing anything. So if you had to make a bunch of these bags really quickly, leave off the pockets, totally great basic drawstring bag. I love this little accent on the bottom. So I know you're gonna ask, this beautiful Star Wars fabric is from Notorious, one of my favorite places to buy fabric. It's a Facebook group, I'll have a link for that down in the description of the video. The pocket is also from Notorious. This beautiful base is cork fabric from So Sweetness. Sarah Lawson was so sweet and sent me like a little assortment pack of cork. So I've been using it in everything and oh, I love this. So Sweetness is where I've always purchased my cork so it was not a problem finding use for all these different beautiful colors. Like I said, the paracord is part of a kit that I got on Amazon. I think it probably is cheaper if you just buy it on its own, but I will have a link for the kit that I'm using today. And yeah, this is just a super fun, sweet, sweet bag to make. Comes together fast. Last month we had a lot of big bags. It took a lot of time. I just really wanna have some quick, easy sews that we can use all the time. This fit the bill perfectly. This pattern is from I Think So, and I will have a link for it down in the description of this video. Thank you so much to I Think So for allowing me to film another one of your tutorials. Don't forget the timestamps for every single step of this pattern will be down in the comment section. It'll be pinned to the top of the comments. It's a comment from me. All you have to do is figure out which step you're on, click on the number next to it, and it'll take you straight there in the video. If you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the description. I wanna know if you've made this bag, and if you do make it, because of the video, tell me how it goes, because this is such a fun, fun bag to make. <sighs> Sometimes we just really need a quick, satisfying sew that we know people are gonna love. This is it. This is a really, really good one. All right, let's get started. So for this pattern, you're going to need one yard of exterior fabric and one yard of lining fabric. I'm mixing up my exterior fabric a little bit. I'm using this beautiful Cinderella fabric. This is from Hapa Fabrics and it's just the most beautiful. I'm using this for the main part of the exterior of the bag, but then for that front pocket and the drawstring cord up top, I'm gonna use this beautiful pink accent. Both of my exterior fabrics are quilt cotton. You're gonna also need one yard of quilt cotton for your lining. And then for the base of the bag, you can use vinyl or cork or just anything that's a little bit more durable. I'm using this beautiful purple cork here. You're gonna need a quarter of a yard for the bottom. The pattern calls for one yard of lightweight fusible interfacing. I am using Woven Fuse from Got Interfacing. I would suggest two to three yards if you're going to interface as much as I show you today. The pattern doesn't have you interface many pieces at all. I do choose to interface more pieces in the pattern and I'll go over that in the next step. But if you wanna interface a lot of pieces like I do, make sure you have more than enough interfacing. So I would say two to three yards. So here are some other items we're gonna be using to construct the bag. You're going to need two zippers. One zipper that is nine inches long and another one that is seven inches long. If you wanna skip the zipper pockets, 
then skip the zippers. I'll be using zipper tape today. This is from Sally Tomato. This is zipper tape that looks like metal zippers, but they are plastic teeth, so you can sew over them. For my exterior zipper, I'm gonna use this really fun little castle zipper pool. This is from Wizardry Stitchery. For my thread, I'll be using this Mara 100. Instead of a fabric drawstring, I'm just gonna use paracord. The pattern does walk you through how to make a fabric drawstring if you'd like to do that. It's very simple. Paracord is even more simple. So I will be using paracord today. Regardless of what kind of drawstring you use, you're gonna want a safety pin to help you thread it through the top of the bag. And if you are using paracord, you're also gonna wanna have a lighter. We will be burning the ends of these to close them and I'll show you how to do that. So I wanted to share with you, this is the kit I got for paracord and it has a bunch of different colors. That's why I liked it. I wanted to make a bunch of different bags with different colors of paracord. So that's what the purpose of this is. It also has a instruction manual in here so you can make all kinds of fun little activities. I will have a link for this down in the description but there are probably other more affordable options out there. Here are some of the other major tools I'll be using a lot today. Clips to hold everything together. Pins are gonna help you attach that front pocket. A seam ripper and stiletto, and then this Dritz double-sided quarter inch tape. Now I'm gonna walk you through all of the pattern pieces and I'll let you know which ones I interfaced with Woven Fuse and which ones I didn't. First, you're gonna need two exterior cuts for the exterior top of the bag. This is just quill cotton. The pattern does not have you interfacing this with Woven Fuse. I chose to do that just to beef it up. It does help provide more structure to the bag and just a little bit more support. For the front pocket on the exterior of the bag, you're gonna need one cut of exterior fabric and one cut of lining for the top, and then one cut of exterior and one cut of lining for the lower part of the pocket. I decided to interface the exterior cuts of these fabrics with Woven Fuse, but I did not add any interfacing to the lining cuts. This pocket is also where I'll be attaching my bag label. For the bottom of the bag, you're gonna have two cuts of exterior. Now this can be vinyl or cork or canvas, just anything that can withstand a beating. This is the bottom of the bag, so this is the part that might actually touch floors and surfaces. You wanna make sure it can stand up to that and not stain easily. For the lining of the bag, you'll have these two large cuts. The pattern does suggest you interface both of these with woven fuse, which I did. And for the lining zipper, you're gonna have two cuts from the lining zipper pocket panel. I did not interface these with Woven Fuse. And finally, you're going to have three extra cuts for which there are not pattern pieces, two exterior cuts, and I like this to match my front pocket for the drawstring on the top. This is not interfaced with Woven Fuse, but you could if you wanted to. Two cuts for the drawstring tabs on the bottom of the bag. I did decide to interface both of these with Woven Fuse since that drawstring is gonna be tugging on it quite a bit. You want this to be a little bit firmer. And then two cuts for zipper tabs. So the first thing we're gonna do is build the front pocket. For that, you're going to want your front pocket zipper and your two front pocket zipper tabs. So I'm gonna cut my zipper tape down to seven inches, which is the size of the zipper. And I'll put my zipper tape to the side. Like I said, I'm using a fun little accent zipper pull for the front of the bag, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach that real quick. And when I attach my zipper pulls, I leave both ends closed. So you can see when I pull it, this is gonna be the closed end. When I open it, this will be the open end. I don't pull open the sides. Keeping them closed is gonna make attaching the zipper tab much easier. So if you can, just keep both ends of your zipper tape nice and closed. Take one of your zipper tabs and lay it right side down on one end of your zipper tape. If it's a little bit wider than your zipper tape, that's perfectly fine. Grab some clips and clip it to the end of your zipper tape so that they're right sides together. Do the same thing with your other zipper tab, laying it right side against the right side of the zipper tape on the opposite edge. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along both clipped edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So once you have your zipper tabs attached, you can press them open so that they're right sides up and then go back to the sewing machine and top stitch on the zipper tab right next to that seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have the zipper tabs top stitched, you can trim down your zipper tabs so that they're the same width as your zipper tape. You can just kind of eyeball this or you can use a rotary cutter and a ruler to make sure it's exact. Now grab your lower zipper pocket panel and take your zipper tape 
and you're gonna lay it right side down. If you have a preference on which way the zipper opens and closes, make sure you think about that now. Also, if you have a directional print, the top of the direction needs to be up against the zipper. So take your zipper and lay it right side down against the top of your lower zipper pocket. If your zipper extends a little bit past the edges of the pocket, that's okay. Just center it as best you can and then clip along that top edge. And now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this clipped edge as close as you can get to your zipper teeth. For me, that's going to be a quarter of an inch. Make sure you're using your zipper foot here. So before we move on to the next step, I'm actually going to just quickly add my label to this pocket. You can add a label wherever you want. I get my labels made from inked papers on Etsy. I'll have a link down in the description for this video as well as a discount code. So I'm just going to attach this label about an inch away from the left and the bottom sides. And I'm just gonna top stitch this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now before we add the lining to the lower zipper pocket, let's trim down our zipper tape. If it's a little too long, you can see mine extends off the edges just a little bit. I like to hold the unit with the lower pocket wrong side up so I can really see clearly the edge of that zipper tab. And then I'm just going to trim it down right along the edge of my lower panel. Do the same thing on the other side. This just keeps it a nice clean rectangle. Now grab the lining for your lower pocket panel and lay that right side down against the right side of the exterior, lining it up along that zipper edge. And then just clip this to your zipper and exterior panel. There we go. Now you can go back to the sewing machine and just stitch over those previous stitches on the wrong side of your exterior panel. Once you have the lining and the exterior attached, we can press these open so that they're wrong sides together. So I'm just gonna press my lining away from the zipper first. And ironing on your zipper shouldn't cause any problems, but your metal zipper pool can get hot, so be careful. And then I'm just going to line up the sides and the bottom edge of my lining and my exterior panels so that it's a nice, perfect rectangle. And then I'll press along that seam over by the zipper. There we go. Now we're gonna go top stitch along this pressed seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so now we can attach the top in the same way. Go ahead and grab your exterior and your lining for the upper zipper pocket panel. Take your exterior and lay that right side down along the top edge of your zipper. If you have directional print, make sure you figure out the top of the direction so the bottom of your directional print should be going against the zipper tape. Go ahead and lay them right sides together and then clip along that edge. You can see I add a couple extra clips to the sides. That's just to make sure that the rectangle doesn't swerve around and it stays nice and straight. Now we're gonna go sew along this clipped edge as close as you can get to your zipper teeth. For me, that's gonna be a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you have the top exterior stitched down, you can go ahead and flip this over so that you have the right side of the lining for the bottom facing up. Take your top lining piece and lay that right side down against the top of your zipper tape and then just clip it to that previously sewn edge. And now we can take this to the sewing machine and we can just sew over those previous stitches that we made looking at the back of the exterior top panel. So once you have the lining and the top attached, you can go ahead and press these away from the zipper so that they're wrong sides together. Make sure you're lining up the sides in that top long edge so that they're all lined up properly. And now we can go back to the sewing machine and top stitch along this top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So what I like to do next to help with attachment is I like to just baste down all four edges of this rectangle. So I'm just gonna go around the entire pocket unit and base this down at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So 
So once you have this basted, go ahead and grab a ruler and some sort of fabric marking tool. And we're gonna mark lines on the right side of the lining panel. So have it lining panel right side up. Line your ruler up with one of the four edges and line up the ruler on the 3 8 of an inch grid marks. And we're just gonna draw lines that are 3 8 of an inch away from the edges of our panel. Once you have those marked, what you wanna do is just fold along those edges so that you have the lining right sides together. So you should see the exterior poke through and just press down. Don't worry if this is not completely exact. You're just trying to create a seam here because we're gonna top stitch this pocket onto the exterior of our bag. So go around all four edges doing this. And you might find that some parts of this stay down better than others. So I like to just add some clips around the edges, especially on the corners. Try to keep those corners as clean as possible. So trying to hide all raw edges. And then I'm just gonna add a few more clips. Since I use that woven interfacing, this is pulling up more than if you don't use the woven interfacing. So a few extra clips might help you out here. So now grab your exterior units. You only need one to attach the pocket to. So take the other and put it to the side for now. And you'll notice that on the pattern piece, you have this gridded line here. That's where the pocket goes. So all you have to really do is line up your pattern piece with one side of your exterior panel. Grab your pocket and if you want, you can find the midpoint real quick. So I'm just going to fold it in half so I can find the midpoint of the top edge. And then I'm gonna grab a pin and put a pin right where the midpoint is. There we go. So now when I line this up, I'm gonna line it over my pattern piece, covering that dashed rectangle and making sure that my midpoint mark lines up with the midpoint of my pattern piece. So that's all good. So once you've figured out where you want it, you can remove that pattern piece, grab some pins and just pin into your pocket making sure you're also pinning it into the exterior panel. I like to use a little bit stronger pins here. If you're using vinyl or cork or something where you don't wanna pierce the fabric like this, you could also use double-sided tape here and just tape this down. So you can add as many pins as you want to really get this exactly where you want it. Now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch along the entire edge of this rectangle at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. This is gonna hold the pocket in place. If you wanna add extra reinforcement, you can go around and do a second row of top stitching just to make sure this pocket doesn't rip at any point. Oh, that's how you attach that exterior pocket. Isn't that so stinking adorable? Oh, look, and then you pop it. Look, and then this fabric. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Oh, I'm gonna wanna keep this one, but I'm not going to be able to. So now let's attach the exterior bottom to our exterior panels. So starting with the panel with our pocket, lay that right side up, grab your exterior bottom and lay it right side down against the bottom of your exterior panel and then just clip these together along that bottom edge. If it helps, add a couple clips on the side of your bottom panel as well, just so you are squaring it up nicely with your exterior panel. Go ahead and repeat this with your other exterior panel and other exterior bottom panel. So once you have the bottom panel pinned to both of your exterior panels, sew along that bottom clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So once you have these bottom panels sewn on, what you wanna do is fold that bottom panel down so that the seam is behind the bottom panel. So since I'm using cork, pressing here isn't going to help much. So instead, I'm going to finger press it here and then I'll just keep it pressed down when I take it to the sewing machine and top stitch it. So now we're gonna take this back to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch along the bottom edge 
at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, making sure you're catching the seam underneath it. You're more than welcome here to add a second row of stitching that's a quarter of an inch down just for decorative purposes and to make sure it stays in place really well. Look how pretty that looks. Okay, go ahead and put these to the side. Now we're gonna make the pocket in our lining panel. So for this pocket, grab both of your lining zipper pocket panels and you just need one of your lining panels. If you're using zipper tape like I am, go ahead and cut off a nine inch cut of your zipper tape. For this pocket, I'm gonna use the zipper pull that comes with the zipper tape. So go ahead and attach that. So now grab one of your lining zipper pocket panels and we're going to find the midpoint. So I'm just gonna fold it in half so that I can find the midpoint of the top long edge. And then I like to take my scissors and just cut the tiniest little triangle right off that fold so that when you open it up, you can see you have the midpoint clearly marked. So now I'm gonna turn my pocket panel wrong side up. I'm gonna measure down one inch from that top edge where I have my midpoint marked and I'm going to draw a line parallel to that top edge. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to line up the 3 8 of an inch mark along that drawn line and draw a second line just like that. So now I wanna create a seven inch wide box. So I'm going to line up the three and a half inch mark on my ruler with that midpoint mark, lining up my grid mark so that everything is parallel and then I'll just draw a line on my rectangle on the right side. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So this time I'm gonna be marking a vertical line that is three and a half inches on the left of my midpoint mark. There we go. So now you should have an inner rectangle that is seven inches long by three eighths of an inch tall. You can use your ruler and line up that bottom drawn line between the one eighth and one fourth inch mark on your ruler. We're just marking a mid line in our rectangle right here. And then you can extend these two triangles in anywhere from a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch. I just kind of eyeball it. It's not a big deal if they're a little bit different. Now grab your lining panel and lay that right side up. Let's find the midpoint of our lining panel as well. So once again, I'm just going to fold that top edge in half so that I can find where the midpoint is and then clip just the tiniest, tiniest triangle. There we go. And now I'm gonna line up my ruler three and a half inches down from the top edge. So my three and a half inch mark on my ruler is lining up along that top edge. Pick a vertical grid line to line up with your midpoint mark. So for me, that's my six inch mark right here. Grab your pocket panel and lay it right side down and line up the midpoint mark on your pocket panel with that grid point line. So like for me, it's six inches. And then just line up your pocket panel right along the edge of the bottom of your ruler. Now this is easy to attach with pins. We're just going to pin a little bit around that rectangle just to make sure the pocket doesn't move on us. Now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this inner rectangle. Remember our rectangle is three eighths of an inch tall, seven inches long. Don't sew along the midpoint line. Don't sew along your triangles. Leave the edges alone. Just this inner rectangle. So once you have that stitched down, you can go ahead and remove your pins. Now grab a seam ripper and in the center of your stitched rectangle, right along that midpoint line, start seam ripping along that line. Once you have a hole big enough, you can use your scissors and then just cut along that line until you get to the very tip of your triangle. Once you get there, veer off and follow those lines right into the corner of your stitches. Get so close to your stitches, but don't cut your stitches. Once you've done one side, go ahead and repeat that for the other side of your pocket. All right, once you have that opened, go ahead and take your pocket panel and push it through that hole so that the wrong side of the pocket panel is now gonna be against the wrong side of your lining. Flip your lining wrong side up, and then just pull 
the pocket panel out. And now I like to finger press this before I press it with the iron. So I'm just gonna go around this entire edge, pushing that seam so that it's nice and straight. And then grab your iron and just press this lining panel down. Especially if you didn't use any interfacing, this should be pretty easy and stay in place well. All right, once you have that pressed, let's put this to the side and prep our zipper. So grab your zipper tape. And if you have a preference on which side this opens, orient your zipper tape now. Grab your double stick tape and lay your double stick tape right along the edge of your zipper tape on the long sides. So I mean right there, we don't want any of this tape being seen in the end. Go ahead and put the double sided tape down on both long edges of your zipper tape. And I like to attach one at a time, so I'm going to remove the paper from my bottom tape, but I'm going to leave the paper on the top for now. So now only the bottom edge of my zipper tape is sticky. I have my zipper pull moved away from it because it will stick to that tape. With your zipper tape right side up and your lining panel right side up, lay your lining panel over your zipper so that the hole is centered on the zipper tape. You shouldn't have the edge of the zipper tape too close to the edge of your rectangle. There should be a good amount of tape on both sides. And then just gently push it down onto that tape. I find it's easy if I pull my zipper pull out and then push it all the way to the closed position. And then that will allow me to kind of straighten this up a little bit more. All right, once you have one side, you can fold your lining back and then remove the paper from that double-sided tape and then refold this down and push it right along that edge. And that's how I find I can get the straightest zipper here. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch around the outer edge of our rectangle at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That's gonna hold the zipper in place. Once you have your zipper top stitched on, it should look just like this. Go ahead and flip it over so we have the pocket panel facing up. If you have any of your zipper tape extending past the pocket panel, you can go ahead and just trim that down. Now grab that second pocket panel and lay it right side down against the right side of the pocket panel attached to the lining. Line up all four edges. You can use your clips here and clip all four edges together. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along all four clipped edges at a 3 8 inch or a quarter inch seam allowance, whichever is easiest for you. You'll notice when I'm sewing, I actually lay my lining panel right side up and then I flip it to the side and I sew that way. You should not be sewing on your lining panel at all, only the zipper pocket panels. And there you go, your lining pocket panel is ready to go. You can go ahead and put this to the side. Now let's work on our drawstring panels. So grab both of your exterior drawstring panels, lay them wrong side up, grab your ruler and a fabric marker, and mark a line three quarters of an inch in from the short edges on both sides. Do this on both of your drawstring panels. Now we're gonna fold that short raw edge wrong sides together to meet that line that you just marked and then press. Do this on all of the short edges that you marked. Once you have these short edges folded in once, fold it in a second time and then press. Do this once again on all of those edges. Okay, once you have these edges pressed, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna to top stitch along both short edges on both drawstring panels at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once you have the edges top stitched, you're gonna fold your drawstring panel so that it's wrong sides together and we're gonna fold right along that long edge. You can use your iron here and press it to hold the fold for you. Repeat this for your other drawstring panel. And what I like to do is I like to baste along this raw long edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance before I attach it. I find that it's just easier to work with. So I'm gonna go to the machine real quick and baste stitch along these long raw edges. Mm -hmm. 
So now we want to attach these drawstring panels to our exterior panels. So grab both of your exterior panels and both of your drawstring panels. The first thing we want to do is find midpoints. So on the bottom raw edge of our drawstring panels, fold your drawstring short edges together and mark that midpoint. You can do that with a fabric marker or again, it's a super tiny triangle. Try not to cut your basting stitches. Do this for both of your drawstring panels. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the top edge of our exterior panels. So I'm just going to fold that top edge so that I can find the midpoint and then mark or cut a tiny triangle. Do this on both exterior panels. So now take one of your exterior panels and lay it right side up. Take a drawstring panel and we're going to line up that raw edge with the top edge of our exterior panel and centered, which is why we clip those midpoint marks. So line up your midpoint marks first, go ahead and add a clip there, and then just clip the rest of the drawstring panel to that exterior panel. Your drawstring panel should be shorter than that top edge of your exterior panel. Go ahead and do this with the other exterior panel as well. So for now, we're just going to base these drawstring panels to the top of our exterior panels at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can go ahead and put these to the side for just a moment while we prep our tabs. So grab your fabric that's gonna be the tabs for the bottom of your bag, and let's fold them wrong sides together with the long edges lining up and press. You can then open it up, take the long raw edge, fold it wrong sides together up to meet that midpoint press and press that edge. Do this for both tabs. And then take the opposite raw edge and fold that down to meet that midpoint press. We're just hiding the long edges right now. And then you can fold the entire unit and press it so that you just have this long skinny strip. If it's easier, add a couple clips to hold this in place. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along these long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have this top stitch, go ahead and fold it so that these short edges are together like that. And now you can just really quickly take this to the sewing machine and sew along those clipped edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now you can grab one of your exterior panels and grab that exterior bottom panel template, line it up with the bottom of your exterior panel on the cork or vinyl, whatever you used on the bottom. And you'll see it has placement for your loop. So you just want to line up your loop on the same place and then clip it to that bottom panel. There you go. Do the same thing on the other side. You can see I just marked the lines for the loop on the back of the paper. Now we can just baste over these loops at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold them in place. So once you have these basted on, now we can just build the exterior part of the bag. Grab both of your exterior panels and lay them right sides together. I like to line up that seam between the base and the exterior fabric first. Clip that. And then I'll line up the rest of the edges. Do the same on the other side. So once you have this pinned together, now we're gonna go and sew along the long vertical edges in the bottom at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you're using a thick base like I am, you can go over these stitches on the bottom a second time just to make sure that it holds it firmly. Once you have this sewn together, let's just clip these corners on the bottom of the bag so that we'll be able to poke them out. So we're just gonna clip the edges like that 
And then from another pattern, I learned the trick to clip a second time parallel to that diagonal cut down there, close to the stitches, but don't actually cut the stitches. So we'll just allow the fabric to spread a little bit more and give you a nice corner. Once you're done with the exterior, you can flip it right side out and take a look at your bag. Make sure you poke out those corners on the bottom really well. So this is what the exterior of your bag should look like. Go ahead and put this to the side and we'll work on the lining. Grab both of your lining panels and if you have a directional print, make sure that you have it facing with the direction towards the top like that. Grab your other lining panel and lay it right side down so that both of them are right sides together. And then line up those two long vertical edges and the bottom edge. And then just clip these together along those three edges. And then on one of these clipped edges, any of the ones you want, go ahead and mark a three to four inch opening on the side. And now what we're gonna do is sew along these clipped edges. My seam allowance at the top of the bag is going to be 3 eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to increase it to about 5 eighths of an inch on the sides and then 5 eighths of an inch on the bottom. This just makes sure that the lining isn't too baggy. When you come to your marks, make sure you backstitch well at each mark and don't sew in between them. We're gonna use this hole later to turn the bag out. There we go. And you can actually trim down this seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch, especially if you increased your seam allowance like I did. Now we're going to put the exterior inside the lining so that they're right sides together. If you have a preference on which side the pockets go, now's the time to think about it. I like the pocket to be on the opposite side of the outer pocket. So I'm going to lay my exterior panel right side out inside the bag so that the pocket is against the lining panel that doesn't have a pocket, just like that. And now you could have pressed these seams open if you would like. So line up your seams of your lining panel and your exterior panel first and clip there. Do the other side as well. And again, you can fold the seams in opposite directions or you can finger press the seams open and now make sure that drawstring panel is tucked in between the exterior and the lining panels. And then let's just clip along these long edges at the top of your bag. Make sure you clip around the entire top edge. All right, now we're gonna go sew along this top edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have this all sewn together, pull your bag out through that opening that you left. I tend to leave too small of an opening, so this is a little bit of a struggle to make sure I don't rip those seams. But luckily there's really no part of this bag that's super firm, so it should come out pretty easily through that hole. Okay, you can use that hole to put your hand in and poke out the corners if you need to. Once you have it all turned out, just tug on the inside of that hole and it should just fold down on itself like that. Clip along that folded edge. And now let's just go back to the sewing machine and just top stitch over this opening at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that edge closed, you can just push your lining into the exterior of your bag. Now what we wanna do is go around and top stitch on the exterior panel on the seam between the exterior panel and the drawstring holder. So you can press this with an iron first. I find that at the machine, I just kind of tug on it as I'm top stitching. When I'm top stitching, I find it's easiest to top stitch from the inside of the bag. So just to make sure that the top stitching on the exterior looks the best, I'm actually gonna turn my bag so that the lining is right side out and the exterior is on the inside. So just like this. So this way, when I'm at the sewing machine, I'll top stitch over the exterior and I'll just kind of tug at my drawstring as I go to keep it nice and straight. 
We're gonna top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you're done top stitching, you can go ahead and flip it back so the exterior is right side out. And that is an adorable bag. All right, so let's go ahead and do the drawstring now. So like I said, I'm using this paracord here. In the pattern, they do show you how to build your own drawstring with fabric. You're gonna want two cuts that are 80 inches long each. All right, if you're using paracord, once you have it cut, paracord is unique where it has this frayed edge and if you don't do something about this, it will just completely unravel. Best way to deal with it is to burn it. So I'm just gonna take a lighter. Hopefully I don't have anything flammable around here. And I'm just going to, you can just kind of see it slowly melting. If you don't hold it under the flame for too long, you won't have to worry about it turning black or anything. Let this dry. Make sure you do all four edges if necessary. You just wanna melt that plastic on the end so that it doesn't unravel. So once your cord's all ready to go, regardless of what you're using, grab one end of your string, insert a safety pin into the end of your string. Now grab your bag, insert your safety pin with your string, and then just push that safety pin all the way to the other side, then pull it out. And now we're gonna insert it onto the back drawstring panel. So this time it'll be inserted into the left side and then just push that all the way around to this opposite opening over here on the right of the back panel. Okay, so now pull that back string so that it meets your front string. And now I like the knot to go on the back of the bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the string that's coming out of the drawstring hoop on the front of my bag, and I'm going to thread that from the top down through that loop on this bottom corner, and then I'll remove my safety pin and tie a knot with these two edges. So that way the knot will end up on the back side. It won't end up on the front at any point of our drawstring bag. So I just pull both edges together and then wrap them around into a little knot. And then you can kind of just slowly, gently manipulate it and then get it nice and tight. And there you go. So you see when I pull on this, the knot should stay down here on the back side. So if it loosens up, it'll be on the back of the bag, not noticeable on the front. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So grab your remaining string, insert your safety pin into the end of your string. And this time we're gonna insert it onto the top left side of the drawstring panel on the front of the bag. You can pull out the right side of that top drawstring and then insert it into the right side of the back drawstring panel and push it all the way to the left and pull it out of the left side of the back drawstring panel. Okay, once you have that pulled out, you can remove your safety pin. And just like before, I'm gonna take the string that's coming out of the front drawstring panel and insert it from the top down into my loop here on the bottom. And then I'll tie my ends so that the knot will be on the back of the bag. All right, and there you go. There is your drawstring bag all done. Look at how bright and colorful this is. Pop pink, pop blue. It's just such a happy, happy bag. Oh, I love this bag so, so much. So this is a fantastic bag that you can put together quickly, but if you had something you really wanted to show off, like if you had some fabric you really wanted to show off, this is perfect for it because it has these nice big panels, big pocket panel, the big exterior panel. For me, I just love these custom made zipper pulls. So this was perfect for the castle. I mean, Cinderella, the castle. <sighs> this bag is, 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 is just like Jessica as a bag. Like, this is just the happiest bag. I love it so much. So I hope that you are as excited to make this bag as I am to make even more of them. If you make this bag and you post it on social media, please tag me, I'm at Oakler. It's, I wanna see your version so bad. I have so many ideas. For example, I was thinking like the next version I do, on the bottom, I'm gonna do just like a basic brown cork that has like a textured look to it. 
And then for the panels, I think I'm just gonna stick with like solids or just neutral. So no fun bright stuff, but I'm trying to do more of like a neutral chic bag that's just good for everything, every day. These would be great bags too for packing. I know for me when I'm packing for trips, I like to organize all my clothes. This is a really simple, quick make. So instead of like those packing cubes, you know, you can make a few of these, put them in your suitcase. There's so many, so many things you can do with this. And I just love the drawstring look. It's easy to carry here. I'll show you what it looks like on me. So here's what it looks like on the front. You can't really see anything, but here's what it looks like on the back. So you can see it's a really good size. It's not super small. It's great for kids. It's great for grownups. I'm so excited to see your version. I hope that you're having a great day. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Get out there and make something. Bye.